Welcome to On Track with Julia. I'm Julia Choi, a violinist with the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, and you'll get to hear my talented colleagues speak about their lives. My guest today is Hugo Valverde, who plays second horn with the Met Orchestra. Hugo is originally from Costa Rica. During his master's degree at the Shepherd School of Music at Rice University, he won his prestigious spot with the orchestra at the age of 22. Wow. Now, without further ado, let's meet Ugo. Hi, Ugo. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to have you on. You're my first guest on the pod. So um, I think it's a really great initiative to bring us all together and for our audiences to learn about us a little bit as people. Because, you know, it took a global pandemic to bring us together, but I'll take it. Thank you so much for, for the invitation. And um, as you said, it, it's a good way to uh, get to know the people from the orchestra and see, you know, just so many aspects of our musical life and other, you know, non-music related aspects. But yeah. yeah, happy, happy to do it. Happy to be here. So happy you're here too. So you joined the orchestra not too long ago at the age of 22. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to join a major orchestra and arguably the world's greatest opera company at such a young age? Yeah, well, whenever I think of that day, it's uh, it's basically a dream that came true. You know, we always think when I was here in Costa Rica as a student, uh, my teacher would show me recordings of, you know, great orchestras and and he would bring me pictures of, of orchestras too. So he would say, well, that's, that's your goal. You know, if you want to be a, an orchestral musician someday, that's your aspiration. That has to be your, your wow. goal. And when I went to school in, in the U.S., I went to Lynn University and then Rice University. Uh, that goal came even more clear that I wanted to join a, a professional orchestra. And... You know, but it was mostly symphonic, you know, like people say, oh, symphony orchestra. And, but then when I, when I went to audition for, for the Manhattan School of Music for my master's, I went to see an opera at the Met. I went to see Manon Lescott. And yeah. when, when, I, when I heard the orchestra, it was just incredible. I mean, the transparency, the flexibility, the colors the quality of the singing, I mean, everything. It was just like, wow. I mean, I, I had never experienced uh, an opera at that level live. Right. And, you know, I, I was just like, wow, that, that was life changing. And then I went back to school. And then at the end of my first year, I saw the listing of the, of the audition of the Met, Second Horn. And I was like, wow, I mean, should I take it? Should I not take yeah. it? And, and then I, I asked my teacher, I was like, do you think it's a good idea for me to, to take the audition? And he said, well, it would be kind of dumb if you didn't do it. Right. It's, like it's a, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Exactly. And they don't show up so often. So you got to take every opportunity for, you can. For example, I mean, Michelle Baker, who is an amazing person and player. I mean, she was there for 27 years, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So he said, well, you're not going to wait another 27 years for someone right. to re- retire. So you got to do it. If it's exactly. there, then... You... So I remember just sending my resume and everything, and I started listening to to a lot of opera, you know, for the audition. And then it became clear that it was a world that I, was, well, I wasn't familiar with. You know, opera is just not... It wasn't something I was very, you know, used to listen to. Mm-hmm. But then the more I did it, I was like, wow, I mean... So the day of the audition came and everything, and, 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 you know, when I won it, it was just like, I mean, it didn't seem like a long time ago. It was like three right. months since I decided to send my resume, and then when I won the audition, three months. But then it was just, I mean, it's a huge privilege, a huge honor to be yeah, part of such sure. amazing orchestra, and then... I mean, everything about the orchestra, I I love it very much, so. Everyone is so supportive, too. Yeah. And it's it's, so, it's it's such a great group of colleagues, so I'm so, I had the same experience. Um, And one of the things that, 
And one of the things that, um, well, I was really afraid pre- prior to start because I had never played an opera before. Exactly, me man. too. That's the thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I listened to the excerpts. I did a lot of homework. You know, I, I went on the Met Opera on Demand and, and I listened to every excerpt. But then it's different from winning the audition and then playing the opera. Right. I was, I was really nervous. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, of course, I was expecting at the highest level possible, but then for myself. And right. a lot of people, including, of course, the horn section, they were like, oh, no, no, we're, you're fine. I mean, just, you know, enjoy it. We're going to help you. We're going to be here. If you yeah. need anything, just let us know. And, and it has been this way in, until now. So. Yeah, I actually started as a sub and everyone was so incredibly welcoming and nice to me even mm. then. So really speaks to their character, you know. Um, awesome. And how That's long awesome. have you played at the Met now? Uh, three seasons. Yeah, it's yeah, been three whole been my, seasons. Yeah, this would have been my my three, my third season. Third, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, third. So... Let's rewind a little bit. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and your upbringing and where did you live? Mm-hmm. When did you start your instrument and how? And did you pick your instrument or did someone else pick it for you? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, going back to my years in Costa Rica, just where I am right now. <laughs> yeah, so cool yeah. that you could be yeah, there. It, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm home and can't complain about being in Costa Rica right now. You know, listen to the birds. You might hear some birds through the mic. I can hear it. I'm, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I, I started music um, because of my dad. My dad plays trumpet. He's so not a professional cool. trumpet player, but he always... Uh, well, he played in the community band of my hometown. Mm-hmm. So he always took me to the concerts. He would bring me to orchestra concerts and, and, and any type of concert. I was there with my dad and my mom as well. So, um, I mean, I grew up just being basically attached to music. And I would see him practice every day. I would see him play, I mean, play the Arbans, for example. I know the Arbans because of him. Mm-hmm. And... And then, then I, I just started grabbing the trumpet sometimes and then, you know, doodling around, playing some notes, buzzing the mouthpiece. But then it was funny because sometimes I would not play it, you know, like horizontally. I would actually point the, the bell upwards <laughs> and put the mouthpiece where the finger hook is yeah. and simulate and say that that was a tuba. Well, that's because, so funny. <laughs> because when I started, I said I wanted to play tuba first. But then going back a little bit, I was, I think I was six and a half or maybe seven years old when I started music lessons. So I started with solfage, then I started with musical appreciation, and then a year and a half later, yes, a year and a half, I, well, it was time to do the the instrument trials. So you had to bring options. The first one was tuba. The second one was baritone sax, but Mm -hmm. uh, I was too short for, for that. (laughs) <laughs> saxophone so they were like well yeah. you can't play baritone sax because you need to start on the little one but then we don't have any saxophones left so we can give you neither tuba nor the saxophone mm-hmm. so i said well i don't know what what you guys have and then the director of the music school said i have a french horn laying around if, if you want to give it a try and i was like can, can you can you bring it? Because I mean, I can't quite remember what the horn looks like. Yeah. And then he brought the case. He opened up the case, and 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 he said, "Wow, I want to play that." So uh, and that's how he oh, was introduced to the horn. And funny fact, I I actually, well, the horn didn't have a mouthpiece at that point. So I I brought it home, and then I, I couldn't play it because I mean, it didn't have a mouthpiece. So I would tell my dad, this thing doesn't work, doesn't make any sounds. And my yeah. dad said, oh, we, we need a mouthpiece. We're going to bring you a mouthpiece. And, and like two weeks later, I got one. And that's how I started. That's awesome. I've been playing horn ever since. It's, it's been like, what, 17 years, something like that? Yeah. 18. So horn wasn't your first choice. 
but you stuck with it anyway, and you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I wanted to play going. tuba. Yeah, but but then I I, <laughs> I I saw the light. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, that's so cool. So you started basically through the school, and what is yeah. music education like in Costa Rica? Well, the programs here are um, there aren't many programs. Uh, there is the is sort of similar to El Sistema in, in Venezuela because there is an institution that is called National System of Music Education mm -hmm. that my hometown school of music is part of at, at this moment. But back then it was a um, independent private music school, uh, just supported by the local government, you know, like, and then. I was there for four years and then I went to the National Music Institute, which is in the capital in San Jose. So okay. we have different and smaller music schools in, in the towns, you know, around the country. You can find music schools at the beach, in the mountains, in my hometown, for example, because I live in the mountains, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the national musical system, I think. And then you have the National Music Institute, which is part of the uh, an university that I, I I'm having trouble translating the name. But then we have another music school that is part of the University of Costa Rica. So there are like three big institutions that uh, are committed to supporting young, you know, musicians or, or children who want to start a career in music. Right. But it is not very. I mean, we have seen more and more people interested in lately, but it's not like we have uh, marching bands here. We don't have a lot of orchestras here. You know, there's only one professional orchestra and there are three more, but they are like uh, just, you know, per service. And mm -hmm. they do a lot of pop music and they do a lot of, they're very versatile. They, they don't only do classical music. Right. So it's very limited. If you really want to, you know, if playing the horn, it was just, okay, it's only that. And you need to go to that school if you really want to learn horn. If not, then play something else. But I stuck right. with it. I, I wanted to play horn and I went to the National Music Institute there. Yeah, yeah. so cool. And then yeah, the horn took you to Lynn University, right? And could yeah. you speak a little bit about your experience there? Sure. And at Rice. Yeah, uh, so I, in 2012, um, my, who was going to be my teacher at Lynn came down to Costa Rica to play a solo concert and I was playing with the orchestra. You know, from 2010 until 2012, I would play a lot with the National Symphony Orchestra here of Costa Rica because my teacher is the principal horn. So he would have me as an assistant and also second horn. So Very I, cool. I, I, I actually gained a lot of experience. He would, yeah. you know, give me lectures about, hey, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to stay focused, you have to count, you have to tune. So yeah, I mean, you're he was so lucky me, to have he, yeah, that he, experience he was, because it's it not, was amazing. Yeah. yeah, not given to everybody. So, I mean, all these insights, all these tools that he was giving me at at, at a very young age. I mean, I had no idea, but then he did it in a way that I understood given mm -hmm. the fact of my age. And in 2012, we, we had a solo concert and Greg Miller came down to play the Glier Horn Concerto. Mm -hmm. And after one of the rehearsals, I asked my teacher, my teacher, Luis from Costa Rica, I would love to take a lesson with him because, you know, it's a great horn player. He sounds great. And he says, well, yeah, you should ask him for a lesson. Why not? But then I was very shy and my English wasn't that, that good. <laughs> so um, I asked him for a lesson. And then he said, I only have 20 minutes. Um, and I said, sure, it's okay, it's okay. But then those 20 minutes turned into two hours at the end. Wow. And yeah, it was, it, it was incredible. And then after that, he went to talk to my teacher. And then the next day, my teacher asked me, he wants you to go to study at Lynn with him. So uh, he's going to offer you a scholarship. He's going to offer you everything you need. Oh my God. And um, it's up to you to say yes or no. And I had already thought about going abroad to study, 
So, I mean, I said yes right away. And that was mm -hmm. around May 2012 because the admissions were already done. I mean, uh, uh, admissions are in February, I think, or January, something like that. It was way past the date. So I had to basically run with my the passport, the visa, the TOEFL test, everything. And just get ready, you know, get mentally ready, start practicing. And so the day came, I went to Lynn on August 12th. Um, no, August 20th of 2012. And mm -hmm. I spent four years at Lynn. Uh, it was wonderful, wonderful time. I met a lot of great people. The faculty was great with me. And I, it wasn't easy at first just to be in a different country that I, right. you know, it was my first time outside of Costa Rica. So it was just, I mean, I learned a lot, both musically and then personally. Mm -hmm. And then I was there for four years and I graduated in 2016. And then in the middle of my last year, I was like, well, I would love to stay here in the U.S. And I, I, I need to find out good program that I can audition to and then gain a lot of audition experience or audition mm -hmm. preparation. And yeah. I auditioned to several programs and RISE was the one that um, offered me a great scholarship. So because if it wasn't because of that, I wouldn't have done it, to be honest. Right. Yeah. So I went there and I mean, it, it happens to be a great school. I mean, the Horn Studio is, is great there. Uh, and I learned a lot and I spent one year. And I remember telling my teacher that I wanted to get a, a, a job in an orchestra. Mm -hmm. And and I, I told him I want to get a job as soon as possible. And he goes, well, that means we're going to have to work harder. So <laughs> I hope you're okay with it. And I said, whatever it takes. So we did. Yeah. So that, that's you. basically my, my, you know, experience in school, Lynn University, four years, and then rise for, for one year. That's so cool. Um, and so did you, you didn't have another orchestral job before you started at the Met, right? This is your first job? Yes. Uh, well, I, I auditioned to an orchestra in Florida mm -hmm. um, three weeks before. And I was, I was the runner up for the position they, they were announcing. Mm -hmm. But then one of the people had resigned from the section. So they were like, you know, uh, you're the runner up, but we, we would love to offer you the, the position if you want, if you want it. And Whoa. I was like, of course, I mean, it, it's a job, you know, it, it's, um, and then I said yes right away. And then three weeks later, I, I won the match. So I, <laughs> I felt that you know, I Tough had to pass. tell them, hey, I, 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 you know, I won this. And, and, but they were very nice. They were like, oh, that's amazing. We wish you all the best. And yeah. yeah. It was very nice of them, the email they, they wrote. And, but yeah, I mean, right. I, I, I guess I had a job, but then never started because I had to start right. the med. And... That's pretty awesome. I mean, it can't go better than that. Um, what was your audition journey like a little bit um, getting to the Met? It wasn't so easy for me, so I'd love to know what yours was like. You Like, like the in general or just the Met? The in med general. Audition. And, and okay. if you want to talk about your Met audition, that would be cool too. Okay. So, I mean, I, I didn't, didn't take many auditions. I took, um, well, for orchestras, I mean, orchestras, not orchestra. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, they're, I both the, they're both right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah but Different it's languages. Like stress in the word. Exactly. Yeah. The accents. <laughs> the accents. Very, very important. Very important. Um, yep. In, uh, so I took one, uh, the first one was in Florida. The second one I took, well, and, and that first audition was, I mean, I wasn't expecting the outcome because very first audition and the tough part was the date. It was January 2nd mm -hmm. of 2017. So I, I had to fly in December 31st. I actually received the new year uh, in the plane, which was a, some sort of, um, I don't know, the present. If I must say. That's okay. I mean, you ended up doing well in it, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was, I mean, I, I got to Florida and then I, I arrived at a friend's house who is also from Costa Rica. 
she lives there with her family mm -hmm. and I was traveling with my little sister so that that made a huge difference you know that made yeah, it more that's bearable nice. less right. stressful and um, I made it to the finals in the very first audition I I was in the finals and it, it was I mean I wasn't expecting that I, I was like okay I want I would love to win the audition if possible but mm -hmm. it was my first one I don't know how is that going to go um, and then I made it and they, they gave me good comments and I was like, okay, well, I mean, it was a nice start. Like but you then can the do second, this. Yeah. I was I like, okay, I, I was like, I need to see what an audition is like, because I, I had never taken one with all the travel, you know, booking a hotel, the food, but then the second one, I was feeling more, I mean, less stressed, but then it didn't go as well. I mean, I didn't mm -hmm. make it past the, the second, Oh, I made it through the first round and then they, I got caught and I was yeah. like, well, there you go. You just, you just got to keep going. And then I took another one and then I took two more actually. And, and then the med, the med audition was the, the big one. And that's the wow. one that I prepared for, for the longest amount of time, like three and a half months, I think, or three months. And uh, it was special and tough because it was opera, you know, both opera and symphonic right. rap. I knew some of the symphonic excerpts because we worked on them in school. But then with the operas, I was like, okay, I don't know about Tempe. I don't know about the style. So I, what I did, I used the school's access to the Met Opera On Demand, mm -hmm. the online platform of the Met. And I would listen to every excerpt, every solo, and write down everything about the the performance, you know, the, the sound approach, the articulation, uh, the tempo. Um, I would listen to the singers to see what they were doing. So it was a lot of listening, and, and I, I think more than playing in, in a way, you know, just listening to the operas and listening and trying to understand what opera is, you know, it's, it's like another language. Yeah. That, and so it, it was very interesting and some excerpts I enjoyed very much, some others not, not as much, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just very insightful. I mean, I learned a lot of things. So when I got to the audition, I think I, I had an idea of how to approach the excerpts because I think a lot of people make the mistake that um, they prepare the excerpts thinking that it has to be just like playing in a symphony, for example. No, I mean, you have to be flexible with, with some things, you know, in, in, an, in, an, in an opera, the orchestra is not the, we're not the stars. So we mm -hmm. just gotta be there accompanying, collaborating, contributing to, to the whole for picture. Sure. That includes the chorus, the soloists and the orchestra. So, that I sort of understood. You got to be flexible with that and try not to play everything very loud. And, yeah. <laughs> and then just... when you get, sometimes when you get to the pit, you know, if you might get the hand from the conductor and you go mm -hmm. like, but I'm not playing that loud. But it's because <laughs> it's not about that. It's not only about the horns. It's about everything. So. Right. You have to think you about, like... think about everything in context, really. Exactly. So that's really important for our audition, especially. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and that was, that was it, you know, doing a lot of listening and um, a lot of mock auditions. I, I, I did like two or three a day for the, the month before the audition. I did a lot. I did a lot of mock auditions and I played for, well, of course, horn players, brass players, woodwinds. And then I would play for as, for as many people as I could, because the, wow. the more feedback we have, the for you know, we, you got to play for different type of ears, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, a woodwind sure. player might be expecting something completely different from, from a brass player or a singer or a, or a, or a violinist, for example. Mm -hmm. So we, we got to have, uh, you got to be able to take all that feedback and then prepare uh, yeah. as, as much because I think it's very important, not only for brass players, but not only for your teacher. And not only yourself recording, I mean, the, the, the mock audition, you got to, you know, play in front of people because once you get there, you know, you might feel a little, a little anxious because you're going to have a great committee in front of you, which, which are the members of the orchestra. You're yeah, your audition for sure. It's 
it's great to get a lot of perspectives before you play the actual audition. Yeah. So I had a really similar experience too. Um, did you play for anyone at the Met before? Did you get a chance to? I did not. Um, I did not play for, I mean, for the people at the Met because, I mean, I couldn't travel to, to New York. Right, and yeah. I, I, I just, you know, I played based on what I heard in the, in the Met Opera on demand. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's so cool that you could be so insightful about everything and put everything together. Um, and obviously, it was really successful because of where you are now. Um, that's so great. Um, we have something like 200 performances a season at the Met. So I would like to know, how do you schedule learning your music? And how do you also juggle and balance your work life and your life outside of work with our really rigorous schedule mm -hmm. yeah well th that's the thing that um, most people don't know that um, you know they think we, we, we don't perform as much during the week but we, are, we actually perform every night I mean I might not be yeah. performing every night because we have uh, there's another person who has the same job as, as me so we sort of trade and try to make it even and yeah, I mean, it's just, it was very tough at first just to, like, get used to that pace and, you know, uh, co const, I mean, constant, constant, no. Constant? It's just, like, uh, the regularity of, of, of the show. Consistent. The Consistent, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it happens every night. So sometimes you might have to play every night because, you know, your colleague might be on vacation or it's just the way it happens. So, I mean, balancing that was definitely a challenge and being able right. to, to have the, the, my part ready for the first rehearsal. And I mean, I, I try to start, you know, at the, with a lot of time in advance, like if it's a month, maybe two weeks, even I try to learn it, you know, at, with a lot of time so I can listen to, to the versions that we have in the Met Opera on Demand, listen to the music, ask some other colleagues. But um, I mean, I, I, my schedule is pretty flexible because I only have the job at the Met. Yeah. And when I see some of, some of my colleagues who have teaching jobs and then they, I mean, that's what I admire. That's what I want to hear from because they, they have to be very efficient with their schedules. Yeah, so especially they say, with okay, families too. Exactly. With yeah, all I mean, the just kids having running around. The, 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 what do you call it? The, the, commuting also you know people who drive yeah. a lot to get to 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 work in new jersey and especially exactly and so i mean i i, I usually ask them like, how how do you prepare how do you with how how much time in advance do you prepare so hearing them give me their insights their you know their experiences i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do the same because i want to be as prepared as them because when when they play it sounds like you know eating a piece of cake. Like, <laughs> yeah. like but they've also been doing it for millions of years. I mean, not millions, but yeah, many I mean, years, you know, for a long time. But you know, it's still and you, when, when a challenging part come, comes right in front of you, then you gotta be like, okay, I gotta, gotta be able to play that. So yeah. I mean, I try to get the part with time a lot of time in advance and try to just run it, you know, read it through and, and, and try to listen. I, I do it in sections. I don't listen to the whole piece at once. I like to listen, for example, the fir first half of the first act. Mm -hmm. Listen to that and then try to go and play the, the, the music and then second part of the first act and then play again. Then that way I can keep more consistency in learning the part rather than just listening to the entire piece and then reading the entire part. Yeah. Th that way you can, you know, sort of... And, but sometimes it, just, you know, listening to the music and you know, and try to like listen to as many versions as possible. Sometimes there's only one that I have time to. But then, you know, I like to balance things with, uh, for example, going for walks and, and going for bike rides in, in the park. Yeah. I, I like going outdoors very much because growing up here in Costa Rica, that's all I did. I would go right. outside and that was the way to, to forget about everything else. Yeah, it's definitely a culture and, shock. 
coming from Costa Rica going to New York yeah, City. Yeah, it, you know? it was it was it was tough to get used to. So I mean that that's the way they do it. I I whenever I'm feeling like I need a break, I just go outside and go for a walk, go to a different coffee shop or to my favorite coffee shop. Um, yeah, and you're an avid bike rider. I know you. You used yeah. to do really serious bike riding in Costa Rica too, right? Yeah, I, w I was in a mountain biking team for for three years, Whoa. and uh, I, I, it was very it was extremely beautiful because we got to know a lot of great places in Costa Rica. We would go to remote areas in the mountains and then have a competition there. Um, it was great. It was uh, so. It was a great way to balance all that. So I try to do that in New York, even if it's going for a bike ride around Central Park. Yeah. That's gonna be better than nothing. So, I and mean, especially with all the stuff that we have to do, it yeah. takes a lot of stamina to do our job because our job is yeah. really hard. I mean, we yeah. have such a rigorous schedule and. Um, the operas themselves are like two and a half hours at least. At they least, can go I up to like six three, hours, right? I think three hours is the average. It, yeah, uh, three is the average. And then, yeah. so, I mean, it's it's a lot of work and energy that you have to put in. So exercise yeah. is also really important for us. It helps a lot just to like release tension and, and you know, just to feel well, you know, physically well. I think it's very important. Yeah, and for sure. Yeah, I mean, that, you, that's, that's, that's what I do. I have a question. Do yes. you still do you still love New York City? I do. I, I love New York City. I think it's a great place to to be. Um, the cultural richness, uh, you know, all the contrasts you can see in the city, the different neighborhoods, um, and all the things you can do. It's it, it's incredible. I mean, I I love it because, I mean, I, contrasts. You know, like coming from Costa Rica, being in Costa Rica, it's very different from being in New York. But I like that, you know, it's like two completely different uh, things and places, aspects that, I mean, you learn a lot. You know, when you come back to Costa Rica, uh, you, you appreciate your country even more. When you go to New York, you're going to appreciate the city even more. So I think having that, it, it has been very eye-opening in, in, in yeah. many ways. And I love it. I love thing. both places. I mean, I love Costa Rica very much more than new york but i also love new york you know, it's, but they're, they both have a very special place in my heart yeah and it's so nice because you can be half i mean most of the year in new york city yeah and then also go to costa rica during the summers too yeah exactly um, yeah. yeah um what do you let's see so do you have any memorable funny moments that you want to share with the audience um or a favorite performance you might have had at the met Favorite performance? Um, well, the, the one that pops pops up right now is playing the ring cycle. You know, that was something that I always, always wanted to do. And yeah. Was I, it your brass, first ring? First ring cycle, yeah. yeah Me too. <laughs> yeah, because we were sitting like we're very there. close. I remember you were, you like, were my stand partner. partner. Stand partner, yeah, yeah exactly. It awesome. was very loud, <laughs> See, but was it was great. Like, <laughs> horn playing as loud as you, you as, as loud as it gets <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, it, it, just playing the ring cycle was incredible because you know we hear excerpts through the years i think when you tell someone oh the ring cycle they're gonna think bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 yeah bum. that's what most people know but then there's more than that there is i mean there are just incredible moments there i mean amazingly written melodies and and you, I mean, it's it's a great opportunity, and I'm very grateful to have been able to to do it, Me too. and yeah. just to get to know the music. And I don't think I've learned the music well enough yet, because I mean, it takes several times, several yeah, ring cycles for, sure. for you to get used to the music. Of course, I was you know playing my part, and at the same time, I was feeling very okay. Don't do not mess up. Don't miss the count. Uh, so I mean, I wanted to focus on you know, like being expressed and try to follow, you know, my section, my principle. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you're also thinking, oh, don't, don't mess up. Because <laughs> it's the first time you want exactly. to give a good impression. Uh, so it was great, but then it wasn't as, you know, as um, pleasing at times. But, For I mean, you I'm as a forward. player. 
yeah. Well, for me, I mean, not as as, as the outcome, no, as uh, for myself. Hopefully because, not. I mean, I, <laughs> I was but like, yeah, I'm I mean, sure. Yeah, but I mean, I I wanna I wanna do it again as soon as possible. And Me another too. memorable moment was, um, I mean, just just for example, playing at Carnegie Hall with the Mad Orchestra. Also, I mean, it's not opera related, but I mean, to see the same orchestra being so flexible, being so versatile, and uh, you know, in, in the stage of Carnegie Hall, it, it's a a moment that I ch that I cherish. So yeah, for sure. It's very, very. We beautiful. played Bruckner Seven last year, and that was Bruckner so beautiful. Seven. We're gonna play Ein Helden Eleven this this year, but yeah. sadly, we couldn't. Hopefully, do it. it'll be rescheduled, and we'll be able to play Helden Leben soon because that's yeah. one of my favorite pieces. Because my favorite um, uh, tone poem written by Strauss. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, if you could be anything else, what would you be? Or would you click the horn again? Uh, I would be, you know, I, I always was very interested about um, biology, that, that sort of topic, you know, like na being around nature. So I, had I not been a horn player, I probably would have been, uh, again, a biologist, maybe a botanist because Together with my dad, I used to take care of rare orchids. We still Whoa. have some rare orchids here, yeah, in, in the in the in the backyard. Uh, not as many as before, but you know we, because my dad used to do that. He used to take care of orchids, and he would show me the pictures of his garden. Yeah. And one day I was like, I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm, I'm gonna Aww. take care of rare orchids, and and he goes. Really? And I go, I mean, they, they look, they, they, I mean, they look beautiful. I mean, the flowers are just so unique that, um, I mean, you want to be able to take care of that and you want to see it blossom. And I mean, the shapes, the colors, it just really brought my, caught my attention. Yeah. So if I, I would probably be something like that, like a botanist or orchidologist. That's that so cool. And you're so, doing some of that right now too at home. Yes, right? I mean I I'm doing some gardening with my mom. I mean not with orchids, but uh we're trying to, you know, buy many types of flowers and try to, you know, arrange the garden, make it look more beautiful and but yeah. yeah. I still have some orchids from 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 that time that I actually take care of. I in the morning I went to um put some some special uh, food for the orchids. I don't know how 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 to say it, um, you know, because you gotta keep like plant that. food. Exactly, yeah, but at <laughs> certain times they, they, you have to keep a schedule. Be like, for example, at eight a.m. you put uh, the that little powder. Mm -hmm. At ten a.m. you add water. It's like you know following a routine, basically like a practice routine. So I, I like wow. it and I, I enjoy doing that. Yeah, you have to be really diligent as with practicing. So yeah. That's cool. Um, what else have you been doing during quarantine? Did you pick up new projects and teaching? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I've been biking in, in the mountains a lot. Um, not so much this past week because um, I have a project. Uh, I, I'm actually part of a woodwind quintet here in Costa Rica. And we, we try to get together once a year when I'm here. And we try to do concerts and for social outreach, you know, mm -hmm. and for example, we usually charge a voluntary amount up to the person who wants, you know, whatever amount they want to donate. Um, but mm -hmm. we usually suggest a certain amount and whatever we make, we donate it to the association or the social institution that we picked. So we make music for a good cause and we're That's actually amazing. working on, on a project right now. We're about to start rehearsals with all the protocols and all the members have been tested and they yeah. tested for the virus. I actually did something like that too, where everyone got tested, yeah. wearing masks, six feet yeah. apart. So it's just, and then you know, I tested gotta... again and I'm oh, negative. Nice. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just, you know, the new normal, you gotta do these things if we want to, you know, bring an audience together. We, uh, we're not going to bring an audience, but we're going to live stream the concert. But that, that too, you know, staying musically active because 
I mean, if I'm not playing the horn, then, I, you know, there are so many things that I could be doing, but it, it's just hard to, for example, to start. So if I could do something related to music, I knew that I was going to be uh, not as bored. So I'm working on that. I also, I'm teaching a lot here in the students in Costa Rica from, from the music schools and the university. And I'm doing this, at, you know, free of charge because um, wow. lots of them are, are not very, you know, in a financial situation to, to pay for lessons. Yeah, and it's that's good incredible. for me. It's good for me, so I can, you know, develop my teaching skills and shape yeah. them for the future. It's a win-win situation. Exactly. You're, yeah. You're so giving I'm giving knowledge, and you're also like gaining experience from doing that. So yeah, so, so cool. I, it's been great, and I also painted the house with my dad. Uh, we did that. Whoa! <laughs> doing a lot of housework that you know hasn't been, hadn't been done in a while. So. Yeah. So like those home are the improvement that I, stuff. Exactly. That's so cool. What do you usually do during the summers? Uh, in the summers, uh, you know, two years ago, I, I was asked to, to join the Classical Tahoe Festival in Lake Tahoe. Yeah. So I do that. Uh, sadly, not this year. Mm -hmm. We're not able to, to go. But um, I do that. And I also... You know, I like to come back here and play with the orchestra here, play with, with my teacher. So I also play with the orchestra here. And I like to go to, to different places in Costa Rica and places that I haven't been. So that's my goal, too. Every time I'm here, I try to go to a different beach, different uh, part of the mountain, different town. So that's, that's my, my project right now. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. What was your defining moment in choosing this career? Do you have any, or was it just kind of like a one-way street? Um, I think it goes back to the time, you know, when I was a kid, and I would go to the concerts with my dad and my mom. I mean, that really caught my attention. That was like, okay, I want to do that. Um, but then, as I grew up, you know, when I went to to middle school, I. I would actually, I, I started to, to fall, fall in love with the instrument even more. I would actually pick, pick the horn and practice and start mm -hmm. practice. And my mom would be like, so you like it? And I would be like, yeah, I mean, it, it's fun. I mean, so I would practice the, the whole time. Sometimes right after school, I, I would come here and not even go outside to play with the other kids. I would just wow. practice. So. <laughs> It was it was a process, you know, like uh, it took uh, a period of time. But then when when I decided that I wanted to do it was in high school. When I played um, the first concert with the National Symphony Orchestra of Costa Rica. And I was like, OK, I want to do this. We played uh, Pines of Rome and also well, Pines of Rome in the first half. And then we played Rachmaninoff Second Symphony on the second. Wow. Half. So it was it was a big concert, and I was like, I just loved the energy, all the moments, the conductor, the audience. So that was the moment. That I yeah, decided. that's a lot of you know, so beautiful music. There. Yeah, it was in two thousand nine. A concert, okay. yeah, two thousand nine. That I was like, okay, I'm gonna study music for for sure. That's so cool. Also, it's just a really brass heavy. Program, yeah, right? <laughs> and also given the fact that you know, Pines of Rhone and Ragmanin of Two is you know amazing, yeah, great lines for horn. Um, so this is obviously a really hard time for everyone, and especially, I mean, for a lot of students who are pursuing music right now or are mm -hmm. were about to go to a conservatory or a music school. So, do you have any advice um, for them? It's sure. Yeah. I mean, nowadays we have so many tools, um, including the Internet, you know, all the amazing stuff we can learn from, you know, it is available to, to everyone just with a click on, the, on a laptop, a computer, on a phone, tablet, everything. So try to stay curious, try to always learn, listen to great music, not only classical, if you know, classical but listen to great music because I was watching an interview yesterday with uh, one of the trombone players of the Chicago Symphony. 
-hmm. interviewed by a trumpet player. And, and he said that, you know, as performance, we, we always have to give the best, uh, you know, to the, to the audience. But then for us to deliver the best, we have to listen to the best, you know, the best music we can. And that is not only classical. We have to listen to a lot of great music and try to deliver the same message. Because if it's only, let's say, if it's only music, if, it's, if we only practice the whole day, we have to, we won't express anything in, with our playing. We're not going to have any references, you know. We're not going to have beautiful moments that we can portray with our playing. So a balance of everything, you know, never be always hungry, use all the tools that we have available today, but uh, never lose your, you know, your identity as a person. Try not to let other things, for example, this pandemic change who you are. Try not to bring you down because it will eventually pass. Yeah. But, you know, try to express all these beautiful things. Try to find the good side of things despite the situation and try to express that with, with your plane. I think it's, it's, it's very a moment that we can use to do a lot of self-growth and, you know, just to learn new things. So I'm trying to all these all the things not related to music that I'm doing, I'm actually trying to relate them, try to like find the connection and try to see if I can improve my, my playing with it. Yeah, this is definitely, of... definitely a time for self -re -re yeah. self-reflection. And, yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, we have so many, all the time. So many so much things time you could for be that. doing. And, and yeah, so I would say, you know, take advantage of, of, uh, all the tools that we have again um and connect with your family with your friends try not try not to just you know be on your own you know you have yeah. people you have friends who are willing to support you so. it's a hard time but you know you can find light in everything so yeah. every situation okay so it's time for our rapid fire questions so oh, i'm just okay. going to say You're this right. or that would you rather so okay. maybe you can Answer super quickly. <laughs> okay. okay. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Do you have any dogs? I do. I think I heard yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, this one is sleeping right there. It's actually snorting. I don't know if you can. Well, What's snorting. his name? Joski. Aww, it's a, cute. It's an um, English Cocker Spaniel. Oh like, yeah. He's like I think 10 I've seen years pictures. old. So it's just like laying around all day long because he's getting old. So he's just sleeping Aww, the entire day. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, wine or cocktails or beer? Beer. Ooh, okay. Beer. Beer. Um, what's your go-to drink if it's not beer? If it's not beer, a Manhattan. Me too. Because I love, I love whiskey, and you know, it's whiskey. Yeah. It's, it's great. Um, great taste. For wine, red or white? Red. Definitely City or red. suburbs? uh this is hard for i mean well it's it's wow it's it's, 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 it's here's the thing you... i'm thinking like city uh but I, i'm gonna say suburbs because yeah. oh okay suburbs. not yeah. what i was expecting but okay yeah mountains or ocean mountains ramen or udon ramen oh okay definitely jazz or pop Jazz. Or neither. <laughs> jazz. And jazz okay. is incredible. I actually listen to uh, Wynton Marsalis a lot. Yeah, he's incredible. He's, he's just like a true artist. And uh, and all the things he does with the instrument is, is beyond. So, I mean, jazz yeah. for sure. Even his writing, his compositions are just incredible. It's, it's incredible. He's just a, a, a whole, you know, a whole artist. I mean, that's... He's the, just like a different level. One of <laughs> the greatest examples of what an artist uh, should, should be. aim, you know, like should be aiming for, you know. Yeah. Great performer, great... I mean, he's a composer. He has done great things, um, you know, called to change in, in many aspects. And it's incredible. I admire him a lot. Me too. Yeah. But this is supposed to be a rapid fire question. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Um, coffee or green tea? Coffee. For sure, right? You always 
talk about the Costa Rican coffee beans. Every day, every time I'm drinking coffee, even yeah. during the operas. Yeah, me too. I mean, you kind of have to, to get through the hours. Um, yeah. Books or Netflix? Uh, I want to say Netflix right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, cooking or taking out? Cooking. Are you a homebody or an outdoorsy person? Like, do you like to stay home or do you like to go out? Outdoors. You know, right now we have to stay home, but I'm outdoors. I'm always yes. outside. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? It's a combination, but I want to say introvert. Really? Yeah, okay. it, it depends on the situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, cardio or yoga? Cardio. Morning person or night owl? Night owl. Whoa. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kind of have to switch our schedules yeah, around switch. during the I season. used to be a morning person. I, we used to train at 4 a.m. when, when the yeah. biking team, so not anymore. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, text message person or a calling person? Text message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, summer or winter? Summer, definitely. Me too. Yeah. Um, Coca Cola or Pepsi? <laughs> this is so random. I'm sorry. Actually, neither of them. But I would pick, if I had to pick one, Coca Cola, but I never drink Coca Cola yeah. or Pepsi. That's healthy. <laughs> uh, sweet or salty? Salty. Cool. Yeah. Breakfast or dinner? Breakfast, for sure. Hmm. Okay. It's more fun. You, know, you feel the energy right away and the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. Being, are you, what's worse? Being too warm or too cold? Being too cold. I yeah. Think Especially just, from where you are, right? Yeah. You know, if, if it's too warm, then you can just grab a beer and, and or put a fan and that's it. If you are too yeah. cold, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Uh, find a heater um, or a jacket. Online yeah. shopping or in-person shopping? In-person shopping. Hmm, okay. You gotta see the thing. You gotta see how it, you know, you gotta yeah. be there to buy it. That's true. Okay, yeah. so now some random questions. Favorite mm -hmm. opera? Ooh, favorite opera. This is hard. This is not gonna take one second. I mean, not that I've played a lot of operas, but the ones I've played... Um, I really enjoyed La Fanchula del West. I mean, it's the one that I had the most fun so far. Wow. I mean, it, it has a lot of great horn lines and it's great. Was that the story. What? During your first season or second? That was my second season. Yes. With uh, Marco Armiliato. Great. Oh, great he's, so, yeah. he's so yeah, he's great. great. Yeah, he's great. And, you know. Yeah. Um, one new thing you did during quarantine. Uh, one new thing. Well, paint the house. I never painted the house before, so I painted That's the true. whole house. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's new. Yeah. Um, favorite workout trainer. Do you have one? Or do you not really use workouts? online uh i i don't i i don't but um sometimes i put videos you know like you know a landscape for example when i was back in, in new york i would put a i don't know like a drone footage of any type of mountain landscape and i would just bike along with it so yeah. i so i just don't think about how much time i've been biking how many calories and i just just go yeah so that's cool my my favorite trainer <laughs> is nature <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good one. Okay. Um, method of brewing coffee. Because I know you're like a very coffee official. Pour over. It's, it's the one, you know, like uh, key mix too. Key mix, it's, it's, I use it. And uh, French press would be maybe the third one. But key mix okay. is the one that I use the most. But definitely not like machine coffee. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I like to, I have to grind the beans. I have to do the whole ritual, yeah. and, you know. I mean, I, I, we are lucky to have legit coffee in Costa Rica. So we, we got to take pride in that. And, and whenever I'm, I'm back here, I bring 
tons of bags of coffee. So I'm yeah, I'm waiting on mine. Stacked up. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring you one for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you don't have to, but okay. Favorite restaurant in New York City? Katz's. <laughs> Where is that? Is that on it's 50 in, something? No, Katz's isn't down in, um, how do you call that? Lower East Side. Um, I think it's near Second Avenue. What kind of food do they have? It's a deli katezen. Oh, okay. It's, you know, so you it's know, like a deli. Uh, pastra past deli, pastrami sandwiches and and great cool. pickles and beer. So that's my always oh, go to. Awesome. Actually, you know, after I got tenure, after they told me I, I had tenure, I, I walked all the way down there from the Met. You had walked a there? I walked there. I mean, oh whenever goodness. I'm going, I always walk because, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big sandwich. So you got to be able to yeah. burn at least half of the calories, right? <laughs> I mean, that must have been a really happy walk. <laughs> uh, yeah, really I mean, awesome. just waiting for that sandwich and, and you know, no, knowing that I yeah, exactly. get, got in tenure, I was like, okay, I'm making the most yeah. out of it. So I just went down there walking and then, and then walked back and played a show. So I was falling what? asleep doing the show. I was like, and I remember Food coma. Joe, yeah. exactly. Joe was like, hey, hey, stay awake. Food coma <laughs> and like, you know, just feeling so relaxed. From so relaxed, food. exactly, yeah. I didn't have yeah. a beer though, because I had to play. So I had the beer right. afterwards. Being and responsible. <laughs> I remember we were playing uh, Figaro that night. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite coffee shop in New York City? My favorite one is Joe Coffee. Um, yeah. There's one near the Met, but then Blue Bottle is also good. They have good coffee down there. Well, up there, because it's by the Yeah, somewhere second. around there. And yeah, th those two, those are the like, you know, my best, my favorite coffee shops. Cool. Okay, so you take your, your parents in, you know, and they come to visit you. What's your favorite site for tourists? like tourism the high line in chelsea the yeah that's a good district. one it's just a great place you know a nice walk uh not a lot of buildings around and there's always nice yeah. you know it's with the little trees over there and it's, it's a great place i actually line. took my friend there in the winter and so mm -hmm. my recommendation is don't go during the winter because there's not much to see i mean we but actually, the views are nice but the plants we were, are all dead. Yeah, so. it's just, it's, it's kind of like gloomy and it like kind of like sad, but we went there once and it, it started raining so heavily, so strongly that, you know, it was like, okay, let's just yeah go with the flow. But yeah, you have to go. Great. You have to go on a nice day, basically. On a, on a nice day. And then Central Park, of course, you know, it's yeah. lots of space, but go to the park uh, near, 196th because it's less crowded if you stay down in the southern parts just too much too many people mm -hmm. um last question favorite cuisine costa rican <laughs> oh you pulled that one okay <laughs> yeah costa rican awesome. then italian okay yeah. me too i love italian food I would say the same thing, like Korean and then Korean and Italian. Italian. It's a classic. I love, classic. yeah, I love American food too. I just love everything. Well, Ugo, I had so much fun talking about all these things with you and learning Damn, a little too. bit about with about you and all the cool things you've done. Um, where can people find you if they want to connect? Um, well, you know, Facebook. You can look. You know put my name Hugo Valverde and also Instagram I, I'm a very I mean I'm very into social media it, it's a way for me to um, stay connected with people and I'm going to share a, a little story about uh, why I decided to be more active on Instagram especially mm -hmm. because there was one time I posted a video of, of me playing just you know some A to excerpt yeah and, and it was an A to from the Arbenz book uh, it's a trumpet book, but then corn players can oh. use it as well. Yeah. Okay. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of people who followed me from Latin America were like, hello, uh, this is so inspiring. Please keep this up. I mean, it's, it's because we don't have access to a teacher or someone who can show us how to do things. That's and I was awesome. Like, wow. I mean, that was, so I, I found that 
I could be, I could serve as an inspiration at something so they can learn from. So, sorry. So I, I decided to be more active on, on Instagram. Yeah. That's definitely so great to have a platform like yours and reach out to people. Yeah. I mean, Especially I haven't been time. very, very active this time, but, um, I used to be more active. So I'm, I'm planning to be more active in, in, in the upcoming weeks. Yeah. yeah. And what's your handle for Instagram? Uh, it's a combination of Hugo and Horn. So it's uh, Hug, it kind of Aww. like H-U-G, and then Horn. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. say Hug Horn, but it, it's supposed to be Hugh Horn. So H-U-G, oh! it's H-U-G-H-O-R-N. Okay. That's my so it's like Hugh Gorn. <laughs> Come on, Hugh Gorn. Yeah, Horn. that's what it's it was supposed to be. To I see. I would have never known that if I didn't talk with you today. So yeah. thank you for that information. Yeah, it's very just, important. I, mean, I, I I thought about the you know you know connection of those two Hugo and Horn, put them together. Yeah, that's really creative. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for talking with me. This was really fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun too. Um, thanks for the invitation and uh, all the best with, with with your life. And I hope to see you sooner than later at, at Me the too. Because I miss just make, making music so yeah. much. And I miss with... our colleagues. I miss being there. Yeah. Just everything. Very much. Music. Yeah. Very much. Anyway, and stay so safe. So good to see you. It's you too. To see you too. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining me on the first episode of On Tracked with Julia. I'm Julia Choi, and my guest today was Ugo Valverde, who is the second horn player at the Met Orchestra. I hope you had a great time learning a little bit about Ugo. You can connect with Ugo on Facebook or Instagram at H-U-G-H-O-R-N. Stay tuned for more conversations with my colleagues. If you made it this far, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons and leave me a review. Thank you so much for listening.